we go down from we knee and we pray if we are walk and I fall in the and we pick me never do him nothing according to reports the family of Clyde Lizard Williams is hiding yeah they don't want to be seen they don't want to be heard so the league vice note alleged to be the mom of lizard is all fake viewers stay near we have it all coming up remember like the video share the video subscribe support the movement get connected stay connected one connection or no connection Now viewers and subscribers, with the running and we are doing the same way, dog. Who don't know how we keep on up to date, you know, and when we attack, you know, we talk facts. You know, we bring the thing real as it is. So viewers, we have a vice note to circulate, alleged to be the mom of Clive Lizard Williams. You know what I mean? And after such case, who in that family would really want to be seen or heard? Trust me, think about it. I hide them people here, yeah, I hide them people yeah, literally, I hide because on a pram push case I go on and them seem so scared. We have article for share, we don't know. And we still have the alleged vice note according to the street. Say a lizard mom for share, we don't know. Also coming up, Vibes Cartel attorney Tom Tavares giving a better understanding and privy counsel and highlighting. The next move. We are going to need your thoughts on the comments in the comment area. Tell me all on the thing. Vibes Cartel, we know the thing though. Stay strong. Now, viewers, the family of Clive Lizard Williams is expressing gratitude to those who have offered their support over the past few years. A spokesperson said in a statement that the family continues to grieve the loss. Yesterday, the Court of Appeal upheld the murder convictions. A Vibes Cartel, whose real name is Adija Palmer, Sean Storm, given name Sean Campbell, Kaira Jones, and Andre St. John. They were convicted in April 2014 for the August 2011 killing of Williams at a house in Evendale, St. Andrew. Meanwhile, Williams' family is dismissing claims that a vice note being circulated on online platforms is the mother of their deceased loved one. The spokesperson said that the family is asking the public for privacy at this time. Trust me, viewers, the, the family basically say them now and the public are take up them time and I draw them to this thing and I highlight them to this thing as them still among them last, you get me? Them now have nothing to do, do with this thing according to what the vice note I say which they are not a part of this thing because the vice note has said so much as in so much you really have to wonder for all who never hear the vice note yet never share it with you know just now so open your ears tell me what you think nah fall in vain we go down from we knee and we pray if we are what and I fall in vain the pick me never do him nothing the pick me never do him nothing they say he might go to the water and now go in vain. He hold up the top keg when the man can tie up them and come run down my picnic and kill him. He said, nah, blood clad, prison cancer, go kill him in there. He might go tan there. And privy council now nah, let him go neither. Me when he done he now nah, go had dollar left. Me yai water now nah, go in vain. The first of February. Every first of February, me member, me member, me boy, birthday the twenty eighth of August. Vibes cartel now come out in a business. Who want come look for me now? Can come in now? Blood clad come out in my can they are in the same way. Oh, me can feel it. Mama go feel it too. And she never go look about him when the pupa say look about him. Me call the push them and lick their head for the concrete court. And when the poop has said sitting wrong with it, she said, they let him not, not win. And she come from national TV, the day of her contact, but she said, no prayers and blessing come down. In blessing run out. Yeah, viewers, when you just hear that phone yourself, now we are going to move on to the next clip. Tam Tavares have a lot for say. Listen. With us now online, uh, Queen's Counsel, uh, Tom Tavares Finson, one of the lawyers on the Vibes Cartel case. QC, good afternoon. Learned Queen's Counsel, good afternoon. How are you? 
Yes, I, we've been busy. <laughs> You've been working um, hard, and so have I. But it's great to talk to you uh, today. I know the circumstances have been uh, overwhelming, uh, to say the least, for today. Uh, what can you tell us about the judgment and how it, you're feeling about it? Yeah, I, I don't know if the correct analysis is to say it has been overwhelming. Um, approximately four years ago, this case finished. Um, we indicated an intention to appeal, and the appeal was heard two years ago. Yes. So, from conviction to judgment, it's four years. It's really, in, in our view, quite unprecedented in, in the view of Valerie Roberts and I who appeared for Mr. Palmer. Yes. Unprecedented. Yes. So therefore, you prepare and prepare for the worst, the hope for the best. And bottom line is that this is not the worst possible outcome. What could, what could have been the worst part? I was about to ask that. What could, because uh, uh, Queen's Counsel, uh, Valerie Nita Robertson, mentioned that, you know, there are many different outcomes, right? What was the worst and what was, and obviously the best would have been for it to be allowed, but what was the worst that could have happened? I'm telling you from my point of view, the worst that could have happened would be uh, the possibility of a retrial. Because then you would have been in the courts for another five, six, or seven years based on what has happened here. Yes. Because eight and a half years he has been before the courts. Yes. Um, this, so this is, this is, what this does, what this does is open the possibility of taking the matter outside of the jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Outside of the geographical jurisdiction. Yes. And to let the court to the council. And we know that a the council appeal and turn around will be significantly less and the four years that we have been left waiting to hear what is happening in this appeal. And how long will it take to appeal to the Privy Council? How long is that what process? I can, what I can tell you is that it will be significant less than the two years that this judgment took to write. Yes. So, um, in so terms the of... Bottom, the, bottom line, the bottom line is that if you are making a, 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 a sensible assessment of the thing, and you realize that they are taking two years to write a judgment. You, you know, you come to the conclusion that they must be writing something. Mm -hmm. And that they are putting their mind on, on writing a judgment that can stand up to some amount of scrutiny. In other words, this is what we expected. So did, we, did the judgment shock you at all? Not in the slightest. Why not? Uh, um... Some of the aspects of the evidence, I personally expected them to take that view of it. Let me just put it that way. Okay, that very well. That's a particular view of the evidence, and that don't surprise me in the slightest. So I, I, I have a view that the public council may very well have a different approach to the matter. Some persons, uh, QC, are saying that, uh, or may not understand, uh, you know, the legalese and all that goes into a case. And they may think that the, the lawyer didn't do a good job or didn't do enough. In terms of accounting for, I mean, you're, you're obviously one of the leading, uh, you know, attorneys and counsel. You're a Queen's counsel, and that means something. The Q and the C are not just ornaments. And so talk to me about the work that would have gone into a case and a matter like this to put before the court to get the judgment? Well, to start with, recognize that the original trial um, took place over, it is the longest criminal trial in the history of, of Jamaica. So that alone will tell you the amount of work that, that went into that. That is to say the original trial. Um, preparing the appeal was a lengthy process in relation to Cartel um, Valerie Nita Roberts and myself and my team and her team um, prepared that. The other lawyers, Bert Samuel, as their senior student, and Robert Fletcher would have worked in relation to the other matters, but it's a lot of work. Yes. Um, you know, you, <laughs> as far as to whether or not the lawyers did a good job, there's an objective, there's an objective analysis of it. The fact that the trial took so long the fact that the trial involved so many lengthy legal and technical issues speak to the fact that the lawyers were working on both sides. Yes. Prosecution and defense. 
And the fact that the court of appeal took two years to respond. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they could say they they could say Queen's Council they could say they are overwhelmed they had backlog and they had many other matters and that two years is not it's long but it is not unusual. It is unprecedented as far as that's concerned and it is an outrageous state of affairs and I have no doubt that the Privy Council will have something to say about. Very well. There's a part of the judgment, uh, uh, Mr. Finson, Tavares Finson, that uh, the judges have given uh, counsel uh, seven days, I think, to respond to the sentencing. Uh, talk to us. Could you talk, speak to that aspect of the judgment, please? What does that mean and why is that important? Well, the president has asked for in an indication as to how much time the appellant has spent in custody. Um, I believe that specifically said prior to the trial. Yes. Um, so that's not a difficult thing to, to compose. So that will be filed early next week in the court. Just indicating how much time each of them spent in custody. So that would that time what, would have been what, subtracted what, from what? No. What is I can't, that? I can't, no, no, I'm not going to speculate as to why they want that. Mm -hmm. But you can you can conclude that they are looking at the question of the sentence being to determine. Because one of the grounds is that the sentence was... Manifestly excessive. Excessive, mm -hmm. a third time. Yes. And 20, 20 years and 25 years for the other sentence. But no, I'm sorry, 35. And 30. 25 and 30. Yes. So they are looking at that. Whether they interfere with it is another matter. I don't know what they would do. And uh, do you have any idea how long now that would take for you to get that judgment back or no, that? No, they said, they said that they gave, they gave mm -hmm. The president said he would give us seven days to file it, and I believe he indicated that they would respond in two. Have you have you spoken to your client yet since the uh, since the judgment was read or handed down? Um, I have communicated with him. Yet. How is he feeling about? I need has to explain he... something to you. Let me explain something. Yes. For at least four months now, I've formed a certain view. And I've spoken with Mr. Farmer's, Mr. Farmer's dad, who I communicate with on a regular basis. Yes. And I've spoken with Shorty, who I communicate with on a regular basis. And uh, we work preparing ourselves for this very day. That's why I expect you that it don't come as any shock. Right. Well, how is Mr. Palmer taking it so far? What that are... is going to try then. Father Palmer. The, the, the Adija Palmer. And Father Palmer as well. And even Shorty. We have moved on, you know. We don't understand it. We move on long time, you know. We have moved on. This is, we were actually hoping for this day so that we can move on. Either let go the man or uphold the conviction. Don't keep it waiting for two years. Yes. We have another step to take. We can't take that step unless you... This was out of our hands. So in a way, this is a relief. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, I, I totally understand. But as, as I said, Queen's Council, remember, we're to, uh, you and I will understand, but we have to talk, we have to break it down and distill it so that my listeners yes. can have a, a full understanding of what is happening. Yes. Let me break it down and show you something. Many Jamaicans here in this trial know instinctively that something was wrong. They know that something was wrong with the telephone because they have the man phone and the phone wasn't locked up. The police were using it. Yes. Instinctively, you know that to put that in evidence, no, something was wrong with it. But but instinctively, but let me, but with, but hold, hold on, Queen's Council, hold on, Queen's Council, one second. It is now four o'clock and I have to go to the news, so we're going to just kindly ask you to hold online with us, Queen's Counsel, Tom Tavares Vincent, his attorney at law, and he's online uh, walking us through uh, what are their plans and, of course, how all of this uh, has come uh, together. Uh, thank you so much, QC, for your patience. You were saying uh, before the break about the instinct that Jamaicans would instinctively know. Yes. Right, pick up. Instinctively, persons listen to the case and they know that there is something wrong. Let me just give you two examples. They know that something is wrong. Police take a phone from a man. They have it using, they don't lock it up. Anybody have access to it, you know that they instinctively there must be something wrong with that. Mm -hmm. You know, in relation to the jury, the fact that there was some interference with the jury, that instinctively something is wrong with that. Okay? Yes. Now, what has happened is that you find yourself in a position 
where you cannot come outside of the jurisdiction of the Jamaicans, well, the, the geographical jurisdiction, unless a verdict is given. Right. So what we were in a state for the last two years. In limbo. Yeah, we are in a state of limbo. Yes. So what this has done now is given us the green light, in a way, to move forward and go elsewhere. To the but what about what very well but let me put it to your queen's council that there are some persons who believe that it is not that the defense was weak or the defense didn't put a proper case or there were so many problems uh with the phone and other things but then that overall the prosecution presented a meritorious case a strong case uh, on which he was convicted and so really and truly all the other mishaps and all the other things that happened were not necessarily inimical to the case what do you say to that okay. So what, what you have just done is argued essentially what the Court of Appeal, I believe, once, that once, you, once you go through the judgment, you will see that what they are essentially doing is saying exactly that, and it's called the provide, a proviso. Yes, a proviso, yes. Yeah, so but if, 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 <laughs> if the Court of Appeal or anyone here um, believes that you can use a proviso to raise a case to a particular standard to give a man 35 years in prison, then that's fine. That's their view. Yes. And I'm taking issue with it here. We'll get issue with it at the Privy Council. How, how should... Uh, we're looking at the Vibes Cartel case right now, you know, Adija Palmer, but in terms of, you know, constitutionality and in terms of Jamaicans' rights, uh, QC, how should Jamaicans really be looking at this? Because it's Vibes Cartel today. It could be you. It could be somebody else tomorrow. Is this judgment at all or this the way this case has uh, proceeded and happened? Should this be of cause or concern to Jamaican citizens? But, but the mere fact that you are waiting two years for a judgment, you don't think that that would raise a law? Yes. And that is what I'm saying to you. It, it, undermines, it undermines the confidence that you can have in the system. And you, you, are, you are waiting from the time you are sentenced, four years. You are waiting from a judge, for a judgment from the Court of Appeal. So you're proceeding to the Privy Council. What form will that take? Uh, explain to us, walk us through how that happens and what grounds are you going to bring to the Privy Council? Are you going to add new grounds or are you taking a different ground? How does that all work? That, all of that is to be decided. But the first thing to do, we will look carefully at the judgment, make a determination as to where we go forward and seek leave from the Court of Appeal to go to the Privy Council. Very well. All right, sir. Thank you so very much for your time. And uh, to you and your team, have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you.